Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my hundredth mint commercial. No, 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 don't, no, don't, no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I only have to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Brought to you by the Mutual Audio Network. With a name like Mutual, it has to be good. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. The following presentation is a production of 63 Audio and the Narada Radio Company, a proud member of the Mutual Audio Network. The tedium of everyday life has got you down. Why not take a trip to Adventure Trail? Adventure Trail, a series of exciting tales hosted by the Old Timer. Howdy, sons and daughters. Welcome back to Adventure Trail. I'm your host, the Old Timer, bringing you another exciting and a hundredth percent true tale from my personal experiences. How y'all doing? Me? <laughs> I'm feeling top-notch and raring to go. But before we get a-going, let's see now. Uh, uh, where did I put that thing? <laughs> Here it is. Ah! Smooth. Thank you kindly to our producer, Mr. Pete. Storytelling thirsty word. <laughs> now, this here story I'm going to tell you happened about 75 years or so back. Maybe a few more ago. I was working as a trail boss on a spread called the Shoe Bar Ranch. Now, you might doubt that a duck can swim, that a skunk sucks eggs, or that hog fat will sizzle in Hades. But on the shoe bar ranch, there was one thing considered as sure as cockleburrs in a coyote's tail. Even Pinch Pocket Patterson had been to town and bet $20 on it. And Pinch was a man who wouldn't put up a dime against tomorrow's sunrise. The rest of the shoe bar boys, as far as they could find takers, had dug deep and laid it on the line. Old Duff Mosier, the ramrod, that's what you call the second in command. So he worked for me. Old Duff, he expressed the unanimous views of the shoe bar hands and many others, in the statement he gave Editor Strawn of the Ganado Gazette. In this here forthcoming range reunion and rodeo, I ain't claiming my boys will top the pile in all events. The bronc riding, the bulldog, and the steer straddling, the calf roping, even this here cowboy singing contest, well, it's liable to be nip, tuck, and tickle who takes them. But in the team steer rope pin, you can print it right out on the front page that the shoe bar team of Ransom and McCorkadale ain't been, can't be, and won't be beat. The way they work together, it's a wonder they ain't twins. <laughs> Pals, are they? Well, Mr. Strawn, I've noticed that one of them can't even itch without the other one starts scratching. 
Oh, like Damon and Pythias, huh? Well, I don't know about that. For I've never seen this um, uh, Damon and Pithy puss perform. But if they're aiming to rope in this contest, they just as well get their pie holes fixed for a dose of bitters because... They- I doubt if Damon and Pythias will be entered. But I hear the Box L has a couple of new boys that rate pretty high their own selves. Bud Ross and Sam Hicks, I believe their names are. Ringers! Rodeo professionals! Arena roosters! Duff Moser gave a disdainful snort and looked at the newspaper editor like a pup pretending he ain't noticed the old tomcat spitting at him. Then he continued with his opinion of the Box L roping team. Big time tuckahoos dragged in by the heels and signed on as ranch hands just to qualify for this rodeo because the box L ain't got no ropers amongst their regular hands that stands the tiniest chance. Well, they still ain't. Not again, Rowdy Ransom and Mac McCorkadale. You got any betting money itching you strong? <laughs> just take my word where to lay it. Here, have a drink. Maybe I will. You take a pack of coon dogs, and there's always some amongst them that'll bristle up over who gets to the tree first. This is known in the dictionary as a universal human habit called rivalry, or who treed the coon. Same way with cow outfits. And in the Ganado country, the shoe bar and the box cell was the main pair of rivals. That's why it made the shoe bar boys so happy to know that their steer time team was unbeatable, even by this pair of rodeo ringers. So that's how it was a few evenings before the Ganado range reunion in rodeo, when they gathered in the bunkhouse to practice up some of their cowboy singing. The Ladies Social, Literary, and Business Society had hatched out the idea of a Buckaroo Ballard Bellerin contest in connection with the rodeo. And as they were in the habit of doing everything else together, Rowdy Ransom and Mac. Matt Corkadale was entered for a duet. Rowdy's voice was a beery tone, and Max was a whiskey tenor, and the piece they chose to sing was that sad and sentimental old ballad called The Trail to Mexico. I made up my mind to change my way and quit my crowd, it was so gay. To leave my native home for a while and travel west for many a mile. When Matt come in that evening, Rowdy was already singing. Whoop, a minute, Rowdy. Let me get my guitar. Uh, you got the tune all right, but the words go like this. I made up my mind in an early day That I'd leave my gal, she was too gay That I'd leave my house and roam for a while And travel west for many a mile All right, we gonna sing it your way or mine? Why, the right way, of course! Okay, let's hit her! I made, I made up my, my mind in an early way day that I'd leave my gal she was today. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Damn it, Rowdy. Do you know the words to this song? Or don't you? Why, sure. It goes. It don't know such of a... This here's the ballad of a buckaroo that took to the lonesome trail on account of a female that was cutting up too gay with other fellers. Like it says in the second line, that I'd leave my gal she was too gay. Did you ever hear of a cowboy running off to a life of sin, sorrow, and shooting on account of a whole crowd being too gay for him? Why, sure. In this song I did. You're as crazy as a loco. Hold on there a minute, boys. As I recollect it, this here Ballard has got plenty of verses. If you can't get together on the first, then well, well, I just spare it and start off with the second. Why, sure. Twas in the merry month of May When I started for Texas far away 
I left my darling gal behind. She said her heart was only mine. Rowdy, I've been knowing this song ever since hell caught a fire, and there ain't no such of a verse in it. The second stanza goes like this. Twice in the year of 83, that A.J. Stinson hired me. He says, young feller, I want you to go and follow my herd down to Mexico. Well, that's right. Nice, Mac. Um, uh, Rowdy, what you shaking your head for? Uh-uh. Right's right, Mac, and wrong's wrong, even in a song. That there's the third verse, only you got it plumb wrong. Here's the rifle way it goes. Twas in the spring of 83 that old Jim Stinson said to me, Young man, how would you like to go with a herd of steers to New Mexico? For a mild little man with only one upper lip, Rowdy sure bellowed it big and bold, bearing down particularly hard on the words that was different from old Max. There, Brother Ballad Buster. If them oversized ears of yours ain't too fuzzy with jackass hair, now you know how it goes. Jackass ears, huh? <laughs> well, at least I got something besides jackass brains between them. <laughs> yeah, mostly bone. Bone, huh? Why, you little sawed-off son of a shorthorn! When Rowdy ran some punch... Matt McCorpendale, between the son of a and the short horn, Matt never even took the time to look surprised. The roundhouse right he swang at Rowdy's jaw would have drowned a dromedary, but it never fazed Rowdy a mite, because it never hit him. But the left that fired it connected, and from there on for about a minute, it was a sure enough dogfight. Then, Duff Moser, Link Cassidy, Joe Clark, Pinch Pocket Patterson, Big Nose George, and I swarmed in on them from all directions and pulled them apart. What's going no, on? I've never seen nothing like this. I'm like, oh, yeah. What's going on? Yeah, you better explain it. You better explain it. I don't know what I saw here. Shame on you. Fighting over the full words to a full song. Like a couple of dighty buttons. Old timer, ain't you rambled the range long enough to learn that it ain't manners to interfere in a fair fight? That sure as hell ain't. Just turn me loose and I'll... Sure. Turn you loose and you'd both spit out your teeth despite your spleen. How do you ever expect to be... For my the... part, we don't. Either he agrees to sing the song right or the duet's done canceled. Suits me. I never hanker to hitch up for no duet with no whiskey tendered hog collar in the first place. Well, that settles it then. Call off the duet and everybody's satisfied. Now you're talking, Pinch Pocket. Yeah. Who gives a darn about them old hens and their cowboy crooning contest anyways? My money's on the steer roping. And if you two grappling galoots don't get out there and win it, by golly's I... Steer roping, huh? You think I'm going to team up in a public roping with a Lilliputian lunkhead that blows up and lambasts his own partner just because he's too dumb his own self to recollect the right words to a little old song? Ha! But listen, you fellers. The honor of the whole shoe bar outfit is staked out on that steer roping. Our money's done bet, and... You better unbet it then, Link, if you can. For as far as I'm concerned, the roping team of Ransom and McCork the Dough has sure enough come to the parting of the way. Thou, if you will, that a duck can quack, that your saddle will turn when the cinch gets slack. But don't you never doubt but what them two shoe bar granny hands had their necks bowed by threatening to bonnet them up with slop buckets and pen them up with the hogs. Me and Duff and the boys did manage to kinder hold them apart for the time being. Duff and me appointed Link Cassidy and Joe Clark to take turns hanging on to Rowdy, whilst 
Pinch Pocket Patterson and Big Nose George draw the same responsibility for McCorkadale. If we ever let them tangle to a finish, fists or guns, there won't be enough left of either one of them to rope a rabbit, much less a thousand pound steer. As long as we can keep them apart, there's always a chance they may cool off and eh, make up in time to get into that teen time contest after all. But there weren't much prospect of it. Firing the bust up, them two formerly partners wouldn't even speak to each other. Meantime, the rest of them shoe bar waddies was a getting plum frantic. When they seen threatening wouldn't do no good, they let in the bag. Ah, oh, listen, Rowdy, it ain't fair to the rest of us boys. We done bet ever cent we got on you and Mac. I've even put up my saddle to win that roping. Better catch your bets then, Link. We ain't teaming. Ha! Huh. Try canceling hell with a cup of coffee. Old Sheriff Millwee's holding the stakes. Duff's done been to see him. Millwee maintains a bet's a bet, and as a stakeholder, he ain't a going to cancel nothing lest we get them box ale boogers we're a betting again to agree to it. Now, personally, I'd rather lose 40 saddles than humiliate myself by begging them bullwhackers to let me off. I wouldn't. In fact, I've done been over and tried it. They say that all their side of the bets was that Ross and Hicks would win the steer roping, and whether our men rope or not ain't got no bearing on it. You sure got that right, Pinch Pocket. Damn the bet. It's the disgrace of letting them box out lollipops walk off with a win after all the big medicine we made about it. Well, Big Nose looking at it from that angle. I'll swallow my insults on one condition. Get hold of a songbook with the trail to Mexico in it, and if it shows them words to be the way McCorkadale claims, I'll not only sing it his way in the duet, but I'll also get out there and help him win that steer roping. That's the way, Rowdy. That's a right smart idea, son. Let's put the same proposition to Mac, what say? That's all right by me. So they approached McCorkadale with the idea and he fawned around right smart, but finally agreed to the same conditions. Of course, there ain't no question about which one of us is right, and any honest songbook in the world will prove it. The trouble was, there didn't seem to be no songbook in the whole town of Ganado that even mentioned such a ballad as The Trail to Mexico. The boys reported their lack of success to Duff Mosier out back of the chutes, not more than a half an hour before the rodeo was due to commence. I've studied through every hymn book in both churches, Duff. They got plenty pieces on the trail to heaven, but nary a mention of Mexico. Oh, you have any luck, Joe? No, and it's kind of peculiar, too. I've noticed a heap more people heading for Mexico than I have for heaven. Well, it looks like. Woo! Looky yonder! You reckon they've gone and made up, Duff? It sure looked like it, for yonder was Rowdy Ransom and Mac McCorkadale astraddle of their roping ponies, riding from the stable toward the outside gate, side by side. I told Lincoln Big Nose not to let them two get together. Look, they got their guns on. We better see what's up. Catch them before they get to the gateway. Hey, Snapper! Snapper Smith, shut the gate! Shut that dad blame gate! <laughs> well, <laughs> howdy, boys. Going out to limber up your ropes a little? Limber up hell. We are going outside to settle this here disagreement once and for all. Like gentlemen and cowboys. Rowdy pats the hold of his six-gun plum significant, and we was afraid they was a gonna do it to. But yeah, Duff and now, Pinch now. Pocket yeah, and Joe it. Clark got like in between them. Oh, then we looks up the street and sees ten or a dozen boxel cowboys approaching from the stage. Rowdy and Matt, they exchanged a look between them. 
don't want no box L audience, Rowdy. Suppose we tend to this later. Sure. Anyway, Link says he's got wind of an old fella that'll prove that. Prove hell? I'll prove to you that box is Hiya, songbirds. Any more cash to lay on the team tying? <laughs> sure. Thirty more that the team of Ransom and the Crocodile wins it. You shouldn't have done that, Duff. You know there ain't no such a team anymore, and won't be unless... Well, unless we show you that song in a book, proving which one of you is right. That bears the promise you made us. You're still aiming to keep it, ain't you? Yeah, but... <laughs> you and Joe stay with them, pinch pocket. Yeah, I'm going after that song book. What Duff had got suddenly took with was a good enough idea, all right, if it would work. He spurred his bronc over for the grandstand gate and grabbed up editor Strawn of the Ganado Gazette. Look at here, Strawn, you done bet. Based on my suggestion, some of your own cash money on Rowdy and Mac. Ain't you heard of the bust up? All we got to do is show them boys that blasted song printed out in a book, and they've agreed to abide by the same and call the feud off. Well, we can't find it in no songbook, but what's to keep you from rushing right down to your place and printing one? Let's prevent just three things prevent, Mr. Moister. Number one, printing takes time. It's too late now. Number two, shop's out of paper. Cause the editor used money for paper to bet on steer open in step. Number two, next, only one printer in town. That's me. And shh, he's drunk. So the Ganado Range Rodeo banged up. They come on to the big main event of Team Steer Roping. And the shoe bar still didn't have no prospect to win. For the unbeatable team of Rowdy and Mac was still hating each other's innards over a song. Not only that, but both Link Cassidy and Big Nose George were missing, which broke up both of the shoe bar's other entries. I leave them Honiacs to keep watch over Rowdy and Mac, and they not only don't do it, but plumb disappear into the bargain. I wish to hell it... Uh, Link Cassidy, is that you? What's that guitar for? <sighs> hey, Duff, <clears throat> I, I got him. Bring him over here, behind the grandstand. <sighs> got who? Bring who? Uh, what do you mean, running uh, off when I told you? Oh, Nick Shortridge, huh. Rowdy and Mac, and Pronto, before the team roping's over. Still without savvying 
what was all about Duff with Joe Clark and Pinch Pocket to help him managed somehow to haze them two feuding ropers around behind the stand. There, squatting against the post, was a weather-whipped little old man with droughty whiskers and irrigating eyes. Boys, this beats a book. Meet Mr. Nick Shortridge, the feller that made up the trail to Mexico in the first place which I've brung him here to settle this song argument once and for all. You tell him how it goes, Grandpa. Catch me a cord. My fingers are so stiff I can't wang it no more. That's it. Let's go. <gasps> I made up my mind in an early day that I leave my gal, she was too gay. That I leave my home and roam for a while and travel west for many a mile. But you see, it goes just like I said it did. Quit interrupting me, you young squirt. <clears throat> Twas in the spring of a short ridge. He cuts loose on the stands are about old man Stinson. Only danged if he didn't sing this in Rowdy's way, ending it up. Now it's Rowdy's turn to look like the cat that caught the gopher. He's just waiting for the old man to let go of the double demi semi quaver on the last note before he starts crowing for his side when all of a sudden another old whiskerino come hobbling around the corner of the grandstand, leaning on a cane with one hand and big Nose George with the other. He looks plenty feeble, but his voice ain't. Right, you're guzzling it, Shortridge. Won't you never learn the right words of that there song? It ain't new, Mexico. It's Mexico. Ain't no such of a... Old Jim Stinson never drove a stare to Old Mexico in his life. He drove into New Mexico at Salt Lake, swung past Fort Sumner, Twas and... Twas in the year of 83 that A.J. Stinson hired me. He said, young feller, I want you to go and follow my herd down to Mexico. That's the way it goes, gents. And don't you let no watery-eyed, sniffle-snooted, wabble-tailed old coot like Nick Shortridge try to tell you different. That's right, boys, because I just found out that Mr. Ab Bunker here is the feller that made it up in the first place. I reckon that ought to prove that- Prove my tail feathers. I made up that ballard my own self back in 86. And if Ab Bunker claims different, he's a split-tongued storytelling old magpie. Why, you cockle-burr tailed old sawed-off, song-stealing son of a short horn! I wrote that song! Hey, right then was when old Nick Shortridge hit Ab Bunker with his cane, right between the son of a and the short horn. And the next thing anybody knowed, them two old whisker roosters was going for hell ain't half, pain whipping each other to beat a bullfight. Strangely enough, it was Rowdy Ransom and Mac Mac Corkadale that jumped in quickest to pull them apart. Shame on you. Two old mossy horns like you fighting over the fool words to a fool song. We ought to bump your heads together for you. Then all of a sudden, Mac seemed to realize what he was saying. He looks over at Rowdy Ransom, and his number 11 mouth kinder dangles open, and one of his ham-sized hands scratches his head kinder sheepish-like. Rowdy meets his look with a sort of a sickly grin. Seems like that's what they've been trying to tell us, Mac. Kind of silly, ain't it? Especially when we didn't neither of us make up the dang song in the first place. <laughs> Listen, they're still calling up steer ropers out there, Rowdy. Let's you and me... Get out there and show them how it's dead. <laughs> well, I'll be damned. <laughs> Just like demon and pithy puss, ain't they? <laughs> Now, 
That night, when the shoe bar team of women steer ropers also teamed up with a duet in the Ganado Ladies Social, Literary, and Business Society's Cowboy Singing Contest. The song they sung was the Old Chisholm Trail. It had a new verse that they'd made up their own selves. A kick in the pants or a punch in the nose. Who gives a hoot how the dang song goes? Come and tie ya, yoopy, yoopy, yip, yoopy, yay. It's steer time, team, draws the pay. I went to the boss to get my roll. He figured me out $9 in the hole. Come and tie ya, yippee, yo. Tie ya, yippee, yay. Well, sons and daughters, my story's done told and my bottle's done empty. So I reckon I'll be moseying along in a minute or so. Huh? <laughs> What's that? Why, of course I was there. Don't you remember? All my old stories is true. <laughs> so, that our tale was called Demon and Pithy Puss and was episode two of Adventure Trail. I'll be back next time with another exciting adventure. I spent a little time in the U.S. Navy between the World Wars, and my next yarn is about the rivalry between the Battleship Navy and the Fledgen Naval Aviation Program. There's this Navy pilot, see? And he's in love with a girl, but he has to navigate around a force of nature to get to her. What's that? Well, it was sort of like a big storm. It was the girl's father, the battleship's captain. <laughs> Till then, this is the old timer, signing off. Remember, don't you take no with nickels. Demon and Pithypus was originally a short story written by S. Omar Barker. It was adapted for audio, produced and directed by Pete Lutz. Our cast in order of appearance was Les Marsden as Duff Moser, John Bell as Editor Strawn, Norman Klein as Rowdy Ransom, David Ian as Mac McCorkadale, Eugene Lutz as Pinch Pocket Patterson, Mark Kalita as Link Cassidy, Pete Lutz as Big Nose George and Nick Shortridge, Jordan Brewster as Joe Clark, and Dana Gonsalves as Ab Bunker, with additional voices by Glenn Higby, Glenn Haskell, and members of the cast. The Old Timer is played by Mr. Gene Giggy. The melody for Trail to Mexico was composed by Pete Lutz. Guitar for Trail to Mexico was performed by Riley Lutz. The Adventure Trail theme and special interstitial music was composed and performed by Edward Champion. This was a production of 63 Audio, Corpus Christi, Texas. Join us next time for Flaming Wings, the final episode of Adventure Trail. Sixty three audio. This is mutual. Hello, I'm John Bell of Bells in the Battery, along with my associates, Arnie Kunch. I can introduce myself, thank you very much. All right. Hi, I'm Arnie Kunchbard. That's it? That's it. And also, do you want me to introduce you, Brad? Well, of course, Mr. Bell, that's your job as host. Thank you, Brad. And I'd like to introduce Brad... Hold it. What? Here's your script. Script? Well, <laughs> you gotta know what to say. All right. <clears throat> 
And introducing Brad Montworth, a salesman, incomparable public relations expert, and, of course, unrivaled attorney at law. No, come on, you know how to say it, Mr. Bell. Unrivaled attorney, attorney at, at, at law. law. Oh, Mr. Bell, you shouldn't say those things. You make me blush. Can I do my introduction over again? No. We're here for an important reason. Very important. Indeed. If you think you deserve significant financial compensation, call Brad Motworth, attorney Attorney at at law. law. Oh, boy. At 555-41. No, 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 no. We're here to remind everybody to take steps to avoid the coronavirus. Yeah, don't catch it. Because there's no one you can sue. Wash your hands thoroughly and keep social distancing. What? Social distancing. One more time. Stay about six feet away from everybody else. Right, very good. Oh, I gotta wash my hands thoroughly. I don't want to get me this corona. Ooh, keep your distance now. Socially. I want to keep feeling fine corona. Never gonna stop getting squirts from my Purell. I'm always gonna buy all the toilet paper that they sell. Bye, 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 bye. Whoa. Bye, corona. Bye, corona. Don't get no closer, huh? Beat it, huh? Far enough where I can't see your eyes, Corona. An illness history is not for me. Uh Uh-uh. Don't want to try your COVID on for size, Corona. Never gonna touch. Stay away. My epidermis never wants to be close to where that nasty germ is. Bye, 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 bye. Woo! Fly Corona! Fly Corona! Captain Fly Corona! What? Pumpkin Pie Corona! Now wait a minute! Fly Corona! Goodbye Corona! Good riddance!